Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I'm Kelly Stewart, joined by Adam Trigger of wagertalk.com and Dave Koken, also of wagertalk.com. Both guys have up packages for this college football and NFL weekend. Today, we're going to go to the Big Ten. We're going to talk Minnesota, Maryland. Maryland is a five point road underdog total, 54 and a half, though there are some rogue 55s and even a 55 and a half here over at the Wager Talk odd screen. Adam, I'm going to go to you first. This was a Maryland team that I really considered backing. Last week, I know you were head-to-head -head with Dave and I. We had the Gophers. You had the Cornhuskers, so I'm going to talk a little trash there. But now I was almost about to make a case to go against the Roller Boat guys, P.J. Fleck, the team that I was so high on last weekend in a spot because Maryland has this team's number. On the flip side, you could use that and say, well, the Gophers have revenge from last year. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on this one. Well, guys, I actually thank you because I, I liked Nebraska quite a bit last week, and I ended up leaving it off because I didn't want to bet against you and Dave. And I'm happy I did because uh, Minnesota came out and won that game. With that being said, I think that that was as much of a Nebraska just disaster as it was Mi Minnesota really being the better team and winning. Um, and I, I'm going to fade Minnesota again here. Maryland needed a bye week worse than any team in the country. They had just played Iowa and Ohio State back to back. They got killed in both of them. They, they were injured. And this team just needed a week off. And they got it. And now they got two weeks to prepare for a Minnesota team that I'm, I'm just not that high on. I talked about last week a little bit. Um, Mo Ibrahim and Trey Potts being out. Uh, you know, they've got a young running game and a lot of the responsibilities falling on Tanner Morgan. And this just isn't the same guy. As, uh, Tanner Morgan's not the same quarterback as he was in 2019. His numbers this year, completion percentage, 58.8%. It looks a lot more like last year's 59, uh, 57% than it does his great season in 2019, where he completed 66% of his passes. So I think you're going to see uh, Minnesota have to throw it quite a bit. And Maryland's got a pretty good defense, and they have a pass rush. You know, they've just been exposed by two very good teams. You go back to the Iowa game. A lot of Iowa's um, points came off of Maryland turnovers. Uh, they turned it over seven times in that game. And then, of course, two weeks ago against Ohio State, they ran into the one of the elite offenses in the country. So the Minnesota offense is definitely going to be a step down. And I think, I, I, think, uh, I think Maryland can move the ball here. You know, Minnesota's defense is, is really good at stopping the run. But man, Maryland's not going to run the ball all that much. I have a feeling uh, this is going to be a game where uh, – uh, Tiger Vailoa is going to throw it 35 to 40 times. Uh, tough, tough that Demas is out for the year for Maryland, but Rakeem Jarrett's still an NFL receiver. They've still got a lot of team speed. Uh, I think Maryland's going to be able to throw the ball. They're going to be able to move it a little bit here. I just don't think Minnesota deserves be, to be a five-point favorite. I, I have these two teams relatively even. Uh, so I think Maryland, uh, good value against the number here. I think they can hang around and, and get the money again. Dave, I too considered Maryland, just like last week, I wasn't playing on Minnesota. I was playing against Nebraska. Now this week, I kind of wish that Minnesota had a bigger game than Northwestern on deck, maybe like a Michigan or something really fun where maybe they would overlook this team. But I'm with Adam here. I think the line is just a stitch too high. I thought the home field advantage for the Gophers should be closer to three and a half on a neutral field, maybe minus one, but at minus five, I think it's just a tad too high. Well, there's, there's a lot to look at in this game. I don't think there was going to be a look ahead for Minnesota because of what happened in last year's game. I mean, they're up, I think it was 38 to 20. They end up losing 45-44. Uh, that, that, that was a bad loss. Okay, those are the types of games that coach doesn't have to make any speeches before the game. The team's going to be ready because it's a, it's a game they're going to want. But the scheduling dynamics favor Maryland. Minnesota is coming out of a... Uh, a grinder of a game. I'm glad it worked out. Game went kind of went the way we thought it would, would go, you and I. Uh, not that Minnesota was the superior team, but as usual, because they're the worst close game team in the country, Nebraska found a way to screw the game up and lost it. Uh, they made critical mistakes at the wrong time. And to me, that, that was the play last week, was playing against Nebraska rather than on Minnesota. This matchup, uh, Minnesota's going to take away the run. That's the one thing they do really well. 
is they stop the run. Can Maryland succeed having to throw the ball? I think Tagliavoa's, you know, he's been okay, but when he's, been, when he's had to be the guy to deliver the goods, not quite as good. Um, Minnesota is changing their offense a little bit. We saw it last week against Nebraska where, and I'm blanking on the kid's name, but it's the second unit quarterback. He's more of a wildcat option. Flex going to it more and more. Uh, he's kind of getting to the point where he's 1A one, one now. If Morgan's still one, uh, the other kid's 1A. And I think you're going to get start to see him get more and more playing time down the stretch because, to be honest with you, Minnesota's a better offense when they've got him on the field. Morgan has been inconsistent this year, just hasn't delivered. I don't know what to do with the game. I made Minnesota about a three-point favorite, so there's nothing much there. It's a little bit of value on Maryland. I do think the situation might favor the Terrapins, but things have gone in the wrong direction for this team with the injury issues. And you wonder, I, I like teams coming out of a bye week when things are going well, because bye week gives them a chance to just kind of relax for a few days, then get back to practice, and everybody's in a good frame of mind. When it's a bye week out of a loss for a team that's going in the wrong direction, I don't know. Uh, it, to me, is not a situation I'm as uh, comfortable with. So this game's going to be a pass for me. If I had to bet it, I think I'd bet the under. Um, and I, I suck on totals, so you might want to consider the over just because I said that. Dave, I too suck on totals, and that's why I don't bet them. I'm looking for those plus money dogs instead. Great stuff from Adam and Dave. Both guys, packages up currently at wagertalk.com. NFL, college football, and college basketball is right around the corner.